Which Sony camera has the best 1080p video quality? Let's rephrase that. Which of these five popular 4K capable mirrorless Sony cameras that I have access to has the best 1080p video quality? Also, has the 1080p even improved over a decade? How does it compare to early Sony mirrorless cameras with 1080 video? In these series of tests, I hope to get answers to these questions and maybe even answer some questions you might have. During these tests, I'll explain why I'm even asking these questions. Doesn't everyone shoot in 4K nowadays anyway? I'll also explain my experience with the Sony cameras, as well as recommendations for cameras of different budgets. So let's start the tests. I'm going to be running the same setup multiple times, and if you don't want to listen to any ramble, I'll have the specific comparison time codes in the video description. All the cameras are set to exactly the same ISO, white balance, shutter speed, and FPS. All the cameras have their picture profiles turned off, and I'll be using the standard highest setting for bitrate for each camera. I'm using the same lens each time, which is a Sony 35mm f1.8 full frame lens set to f2. Let's look at the three full frame cameras first, starting with 1080p versus 4K to show there really is a notable difference in clarity between the two, just in case there is any doubt. So a little about me. My name is Axel Wolstenholm and I'm a filmmaker. Since 2016, I've been using Sony cameras starting with the a7S. In 2020, I upgraded to the Sony a6400, which could shoot 4K internally without the need for an external recorder. However, being such a small camera, the a6400 would overheat a lot, meaning I would have to use the external recorder to record or record in 1080p. This I thought wouldn't have been an issue, as I had been shooting in 1080p for years with the a7S. The video quality just seemed really soft I didn't understand. Had I gotten so used to 4K that 1080p now looked garbage, or was something else going on? The reason I had upgraded in 2020 was because I had broken my first a7S, so I didn't have one to hand to compare. In 2021, I went full frame again with the a7C and then upgraded in 2022 with the a7 IV. The reason I upgraded again was just because I was hitting a lot of issues during shooting and in post-production. The monitor turning off during recording when a HDMI was plugged in was one, then the relatively low bitrate was another. I just felt the a7C was holding me back somewhat. Not to say it was a bad camera, but for my full-time professional work, I needed something with a bit more potential. Let's now compare the three cameras side by side. I'll also be increasing the zoom amount to try and see which is the clearest. And trying to research this topic myself, I came across only a couple of videos testing 1080p. Although great videos, they are mostly static cameras and often just focused on a face or test chart. I set up my test to be a bit more real world and challenging. A constant moving camera on a slider, contrasting and moody lighting, as well as a fine text detail on a poster. I would say in this comparison, the a7S actually comes across as the sharpest, but there's a fair amount of noise in the shadows. The a7C is the softest and also has a lot of noise. Then the a7 IV is still a little soft but has much better noise control. I've heard some people say they really like the look of the a7 IV's 1080p as it has a real film feeling about it. For being an almost 10 year old camera, the a7S really still does hold its own and the fact it can be bought for as little as £400 just goes to show what great value it is. Moving on to the APS-C or crop size sensors, in this test we can compare all five cameras by setting the full frame ones to APS-C mode. I'm going to first compare the a6500 and a6400 which is confusingly more recent. Here's a really helpful chart I reference frequently when explaining Sony cameras. The a6000, a6300 and a6500 were the first trio of cameras to come out, with 1080p, then 4K, then a stabilised sensor respectively, followed up by the a6100, a6400 and a6600 replacing each model. The first two this time being very similar aside from some build quality and video settings, and the top tier a6600 getting the new larger Sony battery as well as a headphone jack. For these tests, I borrow my friend's a6500 and I think the quality still holds up really well. Much like all Sony APS-C cameras however, they will overheat after about 20 minutes, so you may want to reconsider this if you're looking to record long videos such as events and gigs. I did make a video about how I managed to extend my recording length for about an hour and I will leave a link to that in the video description. I will say though, these APS-C cameras are really great for photos. The small size, the quick focusing, high burst rate and built-in flash really helped me on photo jobs and they're just plain fun. So if we look at the 1080p side by side here, there doesn't seem to be a lot in it. Very similar image quality between them. The a6400 does benefit from Sony's later colour science when set to default, but this is something that could be tweaked in post. Now let's compare all five cameras, first in 4K, so we can see what the maximum quality looks like from each. Remember, they are all set to the same crop sensor mode and the zoom is set the same at 300%. Now the a7S seems to be struggling here, and that is due to the fact that the S line of cameras all have 12 megapixel sensors, which at full frame is fine with a 4K image, but when using the crop size, it's more like 2.7K, so the camera is actually upscaling the image to 4K, and that's why it looks the noisiest out of the five. 
Lastly, let's get to the one we've all been waiting for. How does the 1080p stack up on each camera? I don't think that anyone would disagree, and I believe the A6400 here looks the softest. Much softer than the A7 IV and the A7S. The A7C seems to be quite smooth, but it lies somewhere in the middle. The A6500 seems to have more contrast, but is about the same as the A6400. So I now have conclusive evidence my A6400 is much softer in 1080 than the A7S. It also looks like if you want the clearest 1080p Sony has to offer in this range of cameras, the A7 IV, as well as being the most recent and expensive of the bunch, has the clearest 1080p. Now I was going to include the Sony A7S III and Sony A1, but they are much more expensive specialist cameras, and I figured there would be much less of a chance you'd want to shoot 1080 on those. Now here I just want to show how far the 1080p mode on cameras has come over 10 years. The Sony NEX 3N was a great entry level camera in 2013, but it just goes to show not all 1080 is equal. That said, if you were to buy a camera today, the original A7S is an absolute bargain for what you get. Sure it has the old battery type, relatively slow autofocus, Sony's old colour science and only does 4K externally, but with a decent lens and mounted on a decent rig or tripod you can still get some great clear video. Also I have had this camera record for 10 hours straight in 1080p and it never overheated. There is an A7S Mark II, which is about double the price second hand. This does shoot 4K internally, but has the overheating problem when doing so. It has in-body stabilisation, but it's very slight and will only make almost static shots look a bit more stable. This is a common theme amongst all Sony's cameras of IBIS. If you're looking for a great value photo-centric camera with a bit of video, I'd recommend the first trio of A6000 cameras, if you can get a good deal. It's very hard to recommend A6600 for over £1,000. You're better off getting the A7 Mark III second hand. I've seen it as low as £1,200 and its video specs are the same as the A7C as they share the same sensor. Obviously the best one out of the ones I've tested is the A7 IV, but it is a big investment. If you're starting to get into filming your photos, you're better off looking at the other ones I mentioned and spending what you saved on decent lenses. You can always upgrade camera bodies later. And that's it for me. Thanks for checking out this video. If you have friends interested in filming Sony cameras, why not give us a share? Cheers.